Hello everyone, this is Jay Kalpana here. In this video, we are going to solve a differential equation from higher order linear differential equation. So let's get started. Problem. Solve d square plus d plus 1 into y equals to cos 2x. So firstly, let's find order and degree of the given equation. Identify the highest derivative. Here d squared is the highest derivative. So our order will be 2. And the highest power of the highest derivative is a degree. So here degree is 1. Or we can just write the given equation as d squared y plus dy plus y equals to cos 2x. We know that differential operator d is d by dx. d squared is d squared by dx is squared. So we can write the equation as d squared y by dx is squared plus dy by dx plus y equals to cos 2x. Now identify the highest derivative. Here d squared y by dx squared is the highest derivative so our order will be 2 and the highest power of the highest derivative is the degree so our degree is 1. Now coming to the problem we are given a differential equation which is an operator form and also it is an f of d into y equals to q where q is in cos ax form. Given differential equation. d square plus d plus 1 into y equals to cos 2x which is in operator form. f of d into y equals to q, right? Here d is a differential operator, so we are saying that the given equation is in operator form and also it is in f of d into y equals to q form. Where f of d equals to d squared plus d plus 1 and q equals to cos 2x. Now we need to find the general solution to the given equation which is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Here yc is a complementary function and yp is a particular integral. We will find yc using the roots of auxiliary equation of the homogeneous equation of the given non-homogeneous equation. Simply by taking RHS to 0, we will get the homogeneous equation. To the given non-homogeneous equation and yp you can find yp using 1 by f of d into q so firstly let's find complementary function using the auxiliary equation the auxiliary equation of f of d into y equals to 0 is f of m equals to 0 where f of m equals to we are having f of d equals to d squared plus d plus 1. So let's replace d by m to get f of m. We will get f of m equals to m squared plus m plus 1. Then our auxiliary equation becomes m squared plus m plus 1 equals to 0. Now we will find roots using quartic formula m equals to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2b right compare the quartic equation the given quart or the obtained quartic equation with the actual quartic equation or quartic equation in m okay so we have a equals to the equation of m square a which is 1 and quotient of m b is 1 and c equals to 1 then m equals to minus 1 plus or minus 1 square is 1 minus 4 into 1 into 1 by 2 into 1 right then we'll get m equals to Minus 
minus 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus 4 by 21 2 which is equals to minus 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus 4 is minus 3 by 2 again you can write this as square root of minus 3 you can write minus 3 as minus 1 into 3 and split square root of minus 1 into 3 as square root of minus 1 into square root of 3 by 2 since we know that square root of minus 1 equals to i then We can write square root of minus 1 as i into root 3 by 2 which is equal to minus 1 by 2 plus or minus i into root 3 by 2. Right? So when m square plus m plus 1 equals to 0, that is if we get an equation like this, then m equals to minus 1 by 2 plus or minus i into square root of 3 by 2, which are complex conjugate roots. Therefore, m equals to minus 1 by 2, plus or minus i into root 3 by 2 are the roots of f of m equals to 0. That is our auxiliary equation which are complex conjugate. See, if you consider a plus ib, then the conjugate of this number is a minus ib. This is a complex number, right? So, the conjugate of a complex number is, of this number is a minus ib. And if you consider this number, then the conjugate of this number is a plus ib, right? Likewise, if you consider minus 1 by 2 plus i into root 3, root 3 by 2, then the complex then the conjugate of this complex number will be minus 1 by 2 minus i into root 3 by 2. Okay? Or if you consider minus 1 by 2 minus i into root 3 by 2, then the conjugate now this number will be minus 1 by 2 plus i into root 3 by 2. So we call minus 1 by 2 plus or minus i into root 3 by 2 as complex conjugate roots. Right? Now, let's write complementary function. We know that if two roots are complex conjugate, okay, or if we have two complex roots otherwise, or if we have complex conjugate roots, then e power ax into constant, some constant into cos bx plus c2 sin bx is a complementary function, right? Then for our roots will get yc equals to e power real part into x into c1 constant into cos b for b equals to root 3 by 2 into x plus c2 into sin b for b equals to root 3 by 2 into x that is Therefore, y c equals to e power minus 1 by 2 into x is minus x by 2 into c1 cos x root 3 by 2 plus c2 sin x into root 3 by 2. Now, let's find particular integral.
We know that we can find particular integral using 1 by f of d into q, where f of d equals to d squared plus d plus 1 and q is cos 2x. Right? Here we need to find d squared, which is equal to here. We are having q, which is in cos ax form, right? For a equals to 2. And we'll find d squared using minus a squared, which is a formula. It's equals to minus, for a equals to 2, you'll get minus 2 squared equals to minus 4. Now, let's see what happens if we replace d squared by minus 4 in the denominator. We'll get minus 4 plus d plus 1 equals to minus 3 plus d, which is equals to d minus 3, which is not equals to 0. Since by replacing d squared in the denominator, we'll get a term which is not equals to 0, right? We'll get something which is not equals to 0. So, we'll replace d squared by minus 2 squared equals to minus 4. Then this becomes 1 by replace d squared by minus 4. We'll write the same steps here, okay? Which is equals to 1 by minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3 plus d into cos 3x. This becomes 1 by d minus 3 into cos 3x. Now what we'll do? See in the denominator we are having d minus 3. So we'll multiply and divide with d plus 3. Okay, then we'll get d plus 3 by d plus 3 into d minus 3 into cos 3x which is equals to d plus 3 by here we are having denominator in a plus b into a minus b form which is a square minus b square into cos 3x which is equals to d plus 3 by d square minus 9 into cos 3x okay Now we have yp which is equals to d plus 3 by d square minus 1, sorry, minus 9 into cos 3x, right? Now let's see what happens here. d square appears in the denominator, right? So let's replace d square in the denominator and see what we'll get. Replace d square by minus 4, minus 9 equals to minus 4, minus 9 is minus 30. Again, which is not equals to 0. So, we can replace d square by minus 2 square, which is equals to minus 4. Then, we'll get d plus 3 by d square is minus 4, minus 9 into cos 3x, which is equals to d plus 3 by minus 30 into cos 3x which is equal to we can just write this as 1 by minus 30 into d plus 3 into cos 3x now we can write 1 by minus 13 as minus 1 by 13 into d cos 3x plus 3 cos 3x. See here we have cos 2x, not 3x, I'm sorry. It's cos 2x, okay? Now this becomes minus 1 by 13 into d is nothing but d by dx into cos 2x plus 3 cos 2x.
I just wrote cos 3x in previous uh, terms. So please correct them. Equals to minus 1 by 13 into derivative of cos 2x is minus 2 cos, sorry, minus 2 sine 2x plus 3 cos 2x, which is equals to take this minus inside the brackets, then we'll get 1 by 13 into minus into minus plus. 2 sin 2x minus into plus minus 3 cos 2x. Therefore, yp equals to 1 by 13 into 2 sin 2x minus 3 cos 2x. Now coming to general solution. The general solution is y equals to yc plus yp. We have yc e power minus x by 2 into c1 cos x root 3 by 2 plus c2 sin x root 3 by 2 plus 1 by 13 into 2 sin 2x minus 3 cos 2x, which is the required solution. Ready? So we have seen a problem from higher order linear differential equation in this video. Hope you will understand. We will see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.